Hi guys, how are you doing today? How's your trading day? How was your week? Good to see you here on the Instagram live, our live session, which we usually try to do on a Friday. That is when I have the time, of course. I'm finishing a um, green week, four out of five days. I'm going to have a losing day today. You don't often see me here on my Instagram broadcast saying that, but um, yeah, that's the reality today. I'm down today. I had a perfect week so far, all green days, four green days out of uh, five. My average is almost four, a little bit less than four. So had to come back to my average. I was hoping to get a fifth consecutive green day. <laughs> Well, that didn't work out somehow. Are you doing good today? Anyway, the market was uh, good to me this week and uh, hopefully will be next week too. I'm looking forward to hear your questions. If you have any questions you want me to answer, I'm here for you. And I will have a question for you later on when we finish this session. And you'll be able, if you answer the right, uh, if you give me the right answer, you'll be able to get a $250 voucher from TradeNet. And um, if you didn't um, see that so far, I mean, we, we do, uh, right now we have the uh, one of our best ever sales. This is uh, an early bet for 4th of July, which is coming soon. And um, you can probably swipe up this video later and uh, could get a um, 4th of July promotion price, which is just $3.99. You can join us for $3.99, get education and the funded trading account for just $3.99. So if you're going to answer the, right, the question later, uh, it's going to be worth $250. And um, from there to join us, it will be just a difference of $150 where you get a, you will get education and a funded $14,000 account. So I'm looking forward to hear your questions and um, answering them. And I see some are coming. So let me go back, see if I didn't miss the first question. And we'll take it from here. At, which, at what age do you think you can, I think you can start trading? You know, I've been teaching people from the age of 12. Um, you know, I, I don't recommend that, but I was teaching people from the age of 12. That was a summer school. We've done that for two years. It was beautiful. I loved every minute. And those 12 year, um, Traders, I should call them. Of course, they only traded demo. They were doing so good. So it's amazing to see how young people are successful as trading. I don't know if it has to do with the fact that every part, everyone's playing now video games and stuff like that, and that makes it, you know, trading a little bit more, a little maybe a little bit less emotional or maybe a little bit uh, less, I don't know, easier for them, and somehow. I found out that young kids do really well, uh, but I can't recommend that uh, unless you're 18, because of course money is involved, unless you're born to a rich father, mother or whatever, and you can afford it and they are supporting you, then fine. Uh, but I would say if you're just starting out and if you're under 18, um, start reading books, start um, you know trading demo, do something. Live, I'm not sure that's a good idea. You're gonna win the voucher today? Oba Oba, well, I hope you will. Let's see, question will come later. At the end of this session, how do I follow your trades in real time? Our YouTube channel has a slight delay, yes, right. Uh, you see Barry, if, um, if you are on the, if you are on the YouTube channel, then sadly it's not due to us. 
it's because of YouTube technology. It is delayed in approximately anywhere between 10 to 15 seconds or so. So sometimes we do have really quick trades which you cannot take on YouTube. Sadly, some of our trades are really quick. And on the other hand, uh, our live trading room doesn't come with any delay, maybe one second or so. So this 399 I mentioned earlier that you can get right now, uh, promotion for our 4th of July promotion, you can get it at uh, tradenet.com or later by swiping up this video, then you could join us for 399 and get uh, to join us in our live trading room, which comes without any delay. So that's the only option we have. Uh, we don't mind if the YouTube was live too, but somehow it's not. I mean, it's their technology and we do not have any control over that. I've got a question here from Chris. Um, I want to know your risk management. How would petrol safe? I'll take partial at one hour and let me, okay. My risk uh, reward system quiz has to do with the fact that I'm trading with a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. I don't like to trade with what is possible, one to two or one to three, whereas a lot of traders are using that. So there's plenty of traders that are using risk reward, which is greater than one-to-one, -one, just to uh, so that you understand traders. One-to-one -one risk reward ratio means that if I'm risking 30 cents, and immediately, I mean, once I'm looking at the trade, I'm looking at the trade, not trading. Once I'm looking at the trade, I will be immediately trying to understand what would be my risk. And if my risk, for example, is 30 cents, therefore my first target, there, there will come more later, but my first target would be 30 cents too. I would not go for a 30 cent target and that's it, wait there for, with a limit order. I will try and get more if I can, if the stock is trending lower, but I would be very, very um, at the point of the 30 cents, at the point of the one to one risk reward ratio, I would be very, very quick to take my partial if I see any sign of a pullback. So, and I will try to get more. And my average therefore would be more than one to one. Definitely more than one to one. I don't think I'm getting to one to one and a half or so, but average of one to 1.2 probably that's what I'm getting. So my suggestion is trade with a one to one risk reward ratio, especially if you're just starting out. The reason is if you have a one to one risk reward ratio where you sell uh, some of your quantity, I usually sell 90% of my quantity, but if you have less quantity than I do, let's say 400 shares, you probably should sell like 75% or so. So if you have a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio and you keep riding the quarter size, for example, I keep riding maybe 10% because I'm trading with large quantities and I'm trying to get to a second target and a third target and a really small size as we go, as, as the trade goes through. But again, um, one-to-one -one risk reward ratio means if you're risking, for example, 30 cents and you're trying to get 30 cents, means to start with, you have a 50% chance to succeed. It doesn't matter if you go long or you go short. At the point you click the button, I mean, just mathematical, at the point you click the button, you've got yourself a 50% chance to succeed. So what happens if you click the button with a trend, with a nice technical formation? with some, the help of some uh, indicators. So if you, if, if you know something about, trade, about trading and you're taking a nice technical formation and you are uh, looking for the trend of the market and you're following it, then you probably have more than 50% chance to succeed. So let's say 60% or 65%. So that beats up your confidence. Can you trade a one to two risk reward ratio? Absolutely, yes. You don't need more than 40% success rate in order to make money with a one to two. And then if you have the right technical formation, maybe you got 50%, but you do not build up your confidence this way. So especially if you're starting out, my, recommend, my recommendation, I, I would recommend to you to go for a one to one risk reward ratio because that will allow you to build up your confidence a little bit better than a one to two or a one to three. I keep using one to one ever since. So I, I started with that. I'm feeling confident with that. It helps me. 
I built up all my trading systems according to that. Is it wrong to use one to two, one to three, or one to four? No, it isn't. It just has to do with your systems, your trading systems, and what you like to do, you're willing to take a risk, and so on. Uh, do IPOs have anything to do with the SP500? Um, no, no, Corolla, no, they don't. Uh, they, they have nothing to do with the S&P 500, so it's a good question because usually when we're watching a stock, when we're trading a stock, we're trading it with the trend, with the S, not only with the stock trend, with the S&P trend. If, you, if, if you're wondering about what I just said, take a look, for example, at Apple and take a look at the S&P 500. And you will find that the S&P makes the first move and then Apple follows. So the S&P is in fact your crystal ball. I'm not joking, I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious on that. Watch several stocks, it doesn't have to be Apple. Watch several stocks. You need to watch stocks over $10, over 1 million shares volume, because these are the stocks that institutional traders are trading. And they are always watching the S&P, and since the institutional traders have more than 80% of the volume in the market, then every stock that is over $10 and um, over 1 million shares a day in volume, will be traded with, relations, with relationship to the S&P 500. Meaning the S&P would make the first move up, the stock will, make the, will follow. Doesn't mean that they have to trend the same way. For example, the S&P couldn't trend higher and the stock could trend lower. But at the point of the pullback, when the S&P will move up, the stock that is trending lower will move up too. So it may come up to a lower high at the same time that the S&P is trending higher. Uh, it's a bit complicated, um, you should maybe read my book, it's called The Market Whisperer, it's uh, one of Amazon's bestsellers, it comes in nine languages, wherever you're coming in the world from, and um, oh, not only this, there's several videos I made on that, uh, go look for them on YouTube and uh, see for yourself, this is a very important question, but no, IPOs do not have anything to do with, with market direction. Um, therefore, you shouldn't be watching the S&P direction. Of, of course, if you're taking an IPO long and the S&P is crashing at the same time, when it rains, everybody gets sweat. So do IPOs. But I'm not talking about very specific points. I'm not. Um, how do I maintain my win rate? Well, you know, over the years, uh, my win rate is approximately 68%. And if I have bad days, and I do have today, today I have two winners and I think four or five losers, I'm not sure actually. Hold on a second. Two winners, five losers. <laughs> so I'm having uh, quite a bad day today. But usually, my win rate is 68% and I maintain it just, it's not on a particular day, it's on a longer time frame. For example, my, I, I guess my weekly um, win rate is probably over 60%. Four winning days, one losing day, but it's not only daily, it's within the day, of course. Where is the market going? I mean, watch the S&P. Right now, it's kind of going sideways, nowhere, nowhere. Uh, it's just a regular Friday, sadly, where we don't always have some momentum. I don't know what is a uh, top step or one up, no idea, sorry. Can't compare because I don't know what are these. Uh, how how has the market uh, changed from 10 years ago? Good point. Uh, you're mainly trading gaps. You're trading them in the same way like you did 10 years ago. Very good point. Market didn't change. You know, we as traders, we often look at the market and we see uh, some change coming and then we think, oh my God, something's going to change here. It did not change for the past 20 years. Now, of course, there were periods like uh, 2008, um, when I just started out, 2000, 2001, 2002. There are, of course, 2009 market was moving up. So there are particular periods where the market is making big moves. 
but the market did not change. And what's nice about that is that the same trading systems that I used before, I'm only improving them through the time. There are some other things that changed, like the way we used the level two, which is totally different because, well, it's not just, I, I can get into this um, uh, exp to explain it right now, but mainly uh, level two was one of my uh, best tools, I mean, main tools. Right now it's just one tool. It's an important tool, it still is an important tool. But back then, if you go back 10 years, then all of these tricks played by uh, uh, high frequency trading, all the computers that came in, um, they're playing with level two, like you can't really understand what's going on. Sometimes you can, and it's very important to watch the level two. Don't get me wrong here. But 10 years ago, or even more than that, level two was very important. You could, there were some tricks, you knew how to um, respond to these tricks, like, but these tricks were done manually. Um, big players was, were, were, were clicking the buttons and, and doing these uh, intraday tricks with the quantities, selling side, buying side, and everything like that. So, um, years ago, that was different. Uh, there were other things, but the market hasn't changed. And this is great, because you come out with your system and you can continue with that. I like that question. You know why? One of the reasons I like that question is because I'm often being asked, should we change? Like, for example, I could have a period in my life where I would trade bad. It happened so. Um, was it two years ago? I'm not sure. Um, I didn't have a losing month for maybe two years now. But if I go back then, even then, when I had a losing month, I think it was in July or something, I can't remember actually when it was my last losing month. I have to check it out again. But it didn't happen for quite a long time. So I do have a period where I'm, even if I'm not losing, I'm not doing that well. And it sometimes happened during the summer. We're getting there now. So at sometimes where I have like a two or three months where I'm not sure where my account is going or even losing money sometimes, like on monthly basis, losing money, I'm being asked by my traders, I'm being asked whether I should consider changing my systems. Now I've been through this so many times. I've been through this so many times. So many times I was considering myself whether I should change my systems. And you know, in the last few years or more than that, I'm making very consistent profits. But if I go back, I'm trading for 20 years now. If I go back 10 years, you know, I wasn't feeling so sure about myself back there, more than 10 years really. And I could consider changing my systems. I no longer do that. And the reason I no longer do that is because whenever I was considering changing my systems and trying to find out something else and trying to change something, then I got hit big time. Because it's not right to change the system, because systems are always correct. You just need to do some adaption to the time, like 2008, you need to change everything, like gold, shorts, for example, things like that. But don't change your systems over time. This is probably the best advice I can tell you today. Probably, uh, I love the question. I, I, I love the fact that uh, I had a chance to respond to that. Don't change your trading system over time. Do some changes only when the market is behaving like, you know, crazy all over the place, like 2008, things like that. How does funded accounts work? Oh, it's uh, Oba Oba who asked the question again. The one who said earlier is gonna make it today. Win the 250 uh, voucher we're gonna give soon. Um, well, funded accounts, Oba, uh, we, 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 we refer our customers to um, an investment firm and um, this investment firm may give you a funded account. They do. If you, go, if you go through our education, they will fund you and you can trade their money. It's not your money. You can, they risk their money and you can trade their account and share the profits. 
it starts at 70% and it go up, up to 85%. So you could trade that account and share the profits and without any risk. So it only starts with $3.99 now, traders. Uh, that's our promotion, our early bed promotion for 4th of July, which you can find on tradenet.com or probably by uh, swiping up this video. So um, that would be a $3.99 to join us with education and a fund account. Uh, let's see if there's more questions here I would like to answer. Have I ever traded penny stocks? Why not short selling them? And why penny stocks are not tradable on TradeNet? Uh, Mickey, if I could stop the world from trading penny stocks, like if I could do like that, and everybody in the world would stop trading penny stocks and stop losing money on trading penny stocks, I would do that. I'm not saying it's impossible to make money on penny stocks. The ones who are making money on penny stocks are usually the ones who are pumping and dumping them. Are you the one who's going to pump and dump? You could make money. You need a huge account. You need to know your way about trading penny stocks. A lot of people are trading penny stocks because it's cheap and because they feel like they could do great with a very small account. And I am yet to see a trader who survived them. I don't care about the stories you hear. I don't care about the get rich stories, which usually are a way to lose money. And I'm not saying that trading my way stocks over $10, high volume stocks is easy. I'm just saying that if you trade penny stocks, I'm always, I'm, 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 I will probably guarantee your failure you're probably going to fail. And of course, like everything else, if you learn well and you've got a lot of money to lose and um, you, you want to find your way around penny stocks and you've got yourself a great teacher, maybe you can do better. There are people who are making money in penny stocks. But the problem is, if it's how to make money the regular way, if trading high volume stocks, those who are being traded by institutional traders, therefore you have some kind of an advantage knowing how institutional traders work. That's my way of trading. Actually, not my way. Excuse me for saying that. That is the regular way that people are trading stocks for hundreds of years, not penny stocks. And that's the way where if you want to su survive trading, you can make it. If you want to trade penny stocks, you're very likely to lose. But again, there are some people who are making money, so, you know, take your chance. In my opinion, and again, if I could stop people from trading penny stocks, I would do that. It's very risky. I don't think it's wise. It's your call. Okay, traders, uh, that was the last answer, uh, the last question and the last answer today. And now I'm getting to the point where I'm going to ask you guys a question. I will expect you to answer. And... The first one who answer correctly will get a $250 voucher to trade it, which comes to a very, very close, very, very close to our $3.99 now promotion where you can get a funded account and education. So here we go. I want a full answer. I will be the, ju the judge of who says, of who gives me the right answer, because there may be some answers which will be not full or I wouldn't like them that much. So I'm keeping um, um, the right for myself to determine who's the winner. And um, it's the answer is a little bit uh, longer than just one or two words, which I usually would ask you a one or two words. I mean, usually the answer would be like one or two words. Uh, I'm not expecting a one or two word answer right now. I'm expecting more like a sentence or two. Don't ask, don't start writing long stories. I will not read them. Answer in a sentence or two, I will read that. So here comes the question. The question is, when we are trading as traders, we are looking at the stock, trying to determine our target 
trying to determine our stop loss, as I mentioned earlier, first stop loss, then target. And we are always talking as a traders, and that was very strange to me when I started trading. Very strange to me when I started trading, and probably quite strange to you guys, some of you, if you're just starting out. We are always talking about points, or actually cents, which are points. Like, if the stock's gone, my stop is one point, my target is one point. One point means one dollar. Stop loss, one dollar. Or my target is 30 cents, my stop loss is 30 cents. In cents. We never use pre-cents. Meaning, we don't talk in, okay, our target is 1% higher or 2% lower um, or 1%, 1.5% stop loss. We never talk in percent. We always talk in cents or in points, as we say as traders. Question is why? Why is that so? Why do we always use points and not percents? Never use percents. I mean, I could say I'm up 10% this week. Yeah. Not for, nobody forbids me from saying that. And if you listen to the financial news, they will always say markets up 2%, down 2%. And I may say at the end of the day, markets down 1.5%. But my target and my stoppers will always be in cents. Is that logical at all? Like if I have a $20 stock, would that be the same like trading a $100 stock? My target is 30 cents, my stop is 30 cents, $100 stock. Why would I always use, why would I always use cents or actually points? I need a, a full answer. Stocks moves differently by percent. That is true, but I need a full answer. Calculation is faster. That is also true, but it's not a full answer. I wasn't really expecting this. Why do... Okay, I'm getting some right answers here, but this is not a full answer. Why do stocks move only in moving sense? It is the right answer. That's why you would trade stocks in sense. But why? Why is that so? Why do stocks move only in sense? So I've got some correct answer, but partial. It's easier to find out the points of sense than calculating the percents. That is true, but it's not a reason. That is because we trade in, in, in sense. That is one of the advantages, of course. It's psychology, not really. Maybe it helps. It's true that stocks move in points, but my question is why? Help you mentally because bigger stocks move small amounts, but can give you more win if you trade large in quantities. No. That is true that because percents depends on the price of the stock. Stocks can move up 150% but down only 100%. That is also true, but it's not a reason. Almost correct, San. Senalini, almost correct, because they trade in quantities, not in sums of money. Almost there. It will make it easier to determine the total dollar being risk. It is true, but it's not a reason. One dollar equals one point. That is correct, but it's not the answer. It's because traders were looking for short term moves and add to our account, our risk is better based of points rather than percents, calculating percents is slower. That is correct, but it's not the answer I was looking for because we need the price to buy. Stocks move in ticks and different stocks in different type of ticks. What do you mean by that? This could be the right answer.
stocks move in ticks? I'm, I'm not sure I understand. And different stocks in different type of ticks. Mm. Okay, I've got my winner. And my winner is the first one who really gave me an answer that I, I can live with is a long name. Uh, the other side of stock trading. You've got the right answer. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. And the answer is stocks move in sense because price action is based on price. Well, that's the right answer. That's the answer I was looking for. That's why I said earlier it's going to be a little bit complicated to give me a, a correct answer. There, there were a lot of correct answers, meaning like what is the advantage of doing that and how it's uh, psychologically better and how it's easier to do that. They're, they're, these are all right, but this is not the reason why we trade stocks in, in cents and not in percents. The reason is and I've got the right answer here. Please contact our support. Clifton will, uh, or Gabe will post their email right below and you can uh, contact them for a $250 voucher. Thank you very much for your answer. Traders, you need to realize that. If you have a $2 stock and a $20 stock, if you're thinking about buying a $20 stock or the breakout, let's say a $20 stock is about to break out. If you're thinking about buying it, you would consider buying it at 2001 or 2002 or 2003. And let's say it just broke over $20. And you're thinking, should I take it at 2001? Well, are you delaying a bit? You're not sure it's going to go up. You, you, you're kind of looking at the stock. It looks back at you and say, prove to me that you're right. Prove to me that you really want to go. That's the way novice traders usually do. Prove to me. Then it goes up another two or three cents and you finally click the button. You bought it at 2004. Now think about the way you'll be trading a $2 stock. The $2 stock is at the breakout. You're looking at the $2 stock and you're thinking, should I buy 2051, 202, prove to me that you're going up. 203, you're finally clicking the button, 204. When you click the button at 204, because stocks are moving up in cents, there's no other way, there's no half cents or a tenth of a cent. Then you bought the $2 stock, four cents up, which will be, will be okay. Will be okay. You bought it four cents up, which is 2% up. The $20 stock, you bought four cents up, which is 0.2% up. The $20 stock could easily do 20 cents breakout. Why? Because people are chasing the price up by cents. Another cent, another cent, another cent, another cent, 20, 30 cents breakout. The $2 stock could do the same. 20 or 30 cents. So really, when a $2 stock breaks over, that's why people love 20 penny stocks. This is extremely dangerous. Don't do it at home. <laughs> but a $2 stock could move up 20 or 30 cents. That's why people love penny stocks. It will be wrong to do that. And I mentioned earlier why. But a $20 stock and a $2 stock would behave quite the same by cents. That's why if you trade a $2 stock and your if you, $20 stock and your quantity is 1,000 shares, your average quantity is 1,000 shares, please trade a $2 stock with the same quantity, 1,000 shares, because the same way it could go up 20 or 30 cents, just like the $20 stock, it could come down 20 cents, just like the $2. Because if people are getting afraid now and they're starting to sell, they're selling by cents and it will come down to the point where it would move the same like the $20 stock. So I want to thank you very much for participating. And it, it, it was, it was, I mean, the rest of the answers weren't wrong. So I, I feel a little bit, a little bit um, uh, sorry for those of you who gave me correct, but not full answer. Or those I said, I'm not seeing them as the full right answers. So the, Probably some people here were going to disappoint from me not accepting their uh, answer today. I know that my question wasn't 
a very clear cut two word answer. That's why it was going to happen. So I'm sorry for that. I'll give you a chance next week to win the $250 voucher. I want to thank you very much for participating. That was great. I loved uh, having you here. And I'm um, looking forward for uh, next week where I'm going to answer more questions. Have a great weekend. Enjoy your weekend. And um, next week. Bye-bye, traders.